Hello, all you rotted souls out there. I'd like to take a minute here and hit the pause button. Step back from the reviews and just take a moment to enter into a new segment that I'd like to call Coffee and Contemplation. So I, uh, I'm i in the middle of this Puppet Master franchise uh, reviews here. And uh, there's a few things that have popped up in that time that I would like to just talk about, kind of uh, get the finger on the pulse of where things stand currently. Uh, at the time that I am <clears throat> recording this and launching this, I have watched six of the 13. So I'm a little under halfway through it. And I had an interesting moment come up. I was at work, uh, believe it or not, this YouTube channel does not pay enough to ditch a full-time job. But uh, anyway, I was at work, and I was talking with my coworker, And he asked me if this was the largest franchise of any horror movie I could think of. Because I had told him that there were 13 movies in this, and his eyes went wide. And he asked me that, and I like, no, couldn't be. And then I started thinking about it. And then I started looking it up. And what I found kind of shocked me that this is perhaps the largest in terms of number of movies franchise in horror history. Um, if I'm incorrect on that, if anybody finds uh, something that I'm not seeing, I would love to hear it and I will retract. But uh, I have started going down the list. I ended up making a spreadsheet here and, uh, I mean, the the biggest one I could think of uh, just off the top of my head without doing any research was Hellraiser. That was only 10. Um, Friday the 13th, you know, if you count all remakes and Freddy vs. Jason and so forth, that's clocks in at 12. Uh, Nightmare, also including the remakes and Freddy vs. Jason, that 9. Uh, Critters, 4. Ghoulies, 4. Saw, 8. Leprechaun, 8. It's Alive, 3, Toxic Avenger, 4, Child's Play, 7, Halloween, 8, House, 4, Exorcist, 4, Paranormal Activity, 6, Pumpkinhead, 4, Poltergeist, 4, Living Dead, 6, Ringu, 5, Sharknado, 6, Texas Chainsaw, 8, Tremors, 6. The only one that could arguably, as far as I've been able to tell, be uh, considered more is Amityville. And I don't really count that. That uh, clocks in at 19 movies with Amityville in the name. But it's not a licensed franchise. I could technically go out with a camera, record a haunted house, uh, you know, for an hour and a half and call it the rotted Amityville experience. Uh, and I wouldn't be getting sued for it. It's the name of a town. Haunted house movies are nothing that you can really protect as far as the franchise goes. Uh, really, the only thing iconic about it is the the windows in the house. And you really can't market and license a franchise around that. So uh, it's not protected property. Uh, the only one, I mean, within the canon of the storyline of the Amityville house, uh, even with remakes and so forth, we're only talking 10 movies. The rest are like Amityville Dollhouse, Amityville Asylum, Amityville Gas Station, for all I know. Uh, it, it gets out there and unreal. So I'm not really counting those other nine uh, and even those 10 sometimes get a little bit loose. So as far as I can tell, with 13 movies under its belt, Puppet Master is the l highest quantity franchise out there. And I just thought that was kind of interesting and worthy of uh, some coffee and contemplation. Uh, that the first franchise that I decided to tackle all in one go in my channel here turns out by total happenstance to be the largest Yay me. Uh, I mean, <laughs> to be perfectly candid, I am actually having a lot of fun with this. Um, this is by no means the worst uh, viewing experience I've ever had. I've seen some real bad movies, and I've been through some real bad franchises. And um, I think Leprechaun was one that was really, really tough for me to get through. Because, I mean, there's eight movies in that one. Um, but I was done with it by movie two uh i didn't even really care for the first one a whole lot i mean i love seeing warwick davis have fun showing up the scenes but other than that 
not a whole lot of redeeming qualities to it, in my opinion. And four was Leprechaun in Space, I think. Uh, and I think at that point, I really did want to just quit, like, on life itself. Uh, and I, I haven't even remotely got to that point with the Puppet Master series yet, even as bad as it's gotten. Um, I'm hoping it actually it, it will continue getting better. Um, I mean, I'll always hope that. Whether or not it will, whether or not I expect it to, is another matter entirely. Um, but then I found an, another interesting dilemma. Uh, looking ahead at the movies coming down the pipeline, uh, coming up very shortly, I have Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys. And I just thought that was kind of, uh, okay, well, let's pit the puppets up against some dolls. I thought it was just something that somebody, you know, drew some ideas out of a hat I did not realize until I looked further into it that Demonic Toys is a franchise not a big one but it is one they had its own standalone Demonic Toys movie before Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys it's one franchise going up against another as opposed to just Puppet Master against some uh, you know some dolls um and I don't like to come at things from a point of uh, uh, ignorance if I'm able to avoid it. If I can learn more, if I can have better perspective, then I'd like to do that. So if I'm going to watch Puppet Master go up against these other entities, and I want to be able to judge it on the merits of the Puppet Master series, then that means I kind of need to know what these other entities are all about. That's, I mean... Uh, that's just my opinion on it. I mean, I, there's, I, uh, I don't see any point in doing this halfway. Uh, so fine. Okay. Before I watch puppet master versus demonic toys, I'll watch demonic toys. But here's another problem. I mentioned demonic toys was a franchise, not a big one, but it is a franchise. The second movie of the demonic toys franchise was demonic toys versus doll man. Doll man is its own franchise. And again, it's not a big one. It, it exists of Dollman and Dollman versus Demonic Toys. But that means in order for me to lay the groundwork to know what I'm talking about and going down a pit of uh, recursion, in order to review Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys, I need to watch three movies at the very least before doing that. So... I have taken this franchise, which is 13 movies deep, and by all accounts, from what I can tell, the largest of any, and I've given myself three more movies to watch before you can even watch one that was in the middle. <sighs> At the time that I'm recording this, it is a Saturday morning. And I think it's safe to say I know what my weekend looks like. So... Uh, that's about all I really want to talk about at this episode of Coffee and Contemplation. I'll probably be doing these once a week, once every other week or so, just kind of, again, stepping back away from the, uh, the reviews. Uh, still doing the reviews. I promised myself and I promised, uh, you know, uh, my subscribers and any, uh, interested audience in this channel that I would be reviewing a movie a day. And I'm going to try and my best to hold true to that, no matter... Uh, if I'm coming down with the flu or whatever, I'll be doing a review a day, uh, if at all possible. So, uh, but outside of these reviews, I'd like to take a moment and every once in a while just kind of catch up with the people that are following this and are kind of interested in it. Um, that's, uh, about all I have to say. I have a couple of announcement videos that are also going to be coming out today, but, uh, I'll keep those separate. So just look for those and, uh... Look for uh, Curse of the Puppet Master, also re uh, re review, also released today. And tomorrow, I have Retro Puppet Master to review. So, thank you for joining me on this episode of Coffee and Contemplation on the Rada channel here. I really appreciate you making me a part of your day, as always. Thank you.